this is Julie Hogue with Vegetarians and Meat Lovers, Split Table Recipes. I am coming at you with some ideas for homes that have multiple diets in their homes and their family members, and in particular focusing on people who have families that have vegetarians and meat eaters within them, just like my own family. I share recipes and ideas, and I interview other cookbook authors. Lee Shishak was the last one I interviewed, and I have another one coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. I did skip last week because I had an audiobook contract come through where I needed to do a quick 15-minute recording for them to approve or disprove my work. And so I didn't have time to do this podcast last weekend because this is my weekend project. (laughs) And so I had to skip last weekend. My goal is to try to do a podcast every weekend for this podcast. And but that last weekend, that's that's why I didn't do it. So I um, I'm back. And today I'm going to be talking about wraps. Not as in the song raps. (laughs) I'm not even going to attempt to rap because I can't rap at all. (laughs) So we'll just not go there. I'm talking about tortillas. I love to use tortillas. They are so versatile. You can do so much with them. And you can do anything from a quick throw together for a, a wrap, you know, veggies and ranch dressing. You could add meat if you want or not add meat. You can put eggs in them, scrambled eggs. They're just so very versatile. And that's one thing I love about them. I just think that they are a great tool for making food. You know, I mean, I call it a tool because kind of you need, unless you're going to use like a bowl, like people, you know, do like a bowl and you're not going to use carbs. Okay, then that's kind of your tool. But If you need the food to go in something, you know, you're putting it on bread or you're putting it on pasta or you're putting it in a tortilla, I kind of think of that as the tool. The tortilla is the tool, just like the bowl is the tool for you to eat whatever you're going to eat. So what I want to talk about today is making a wrap. And one thing that I like to do, which is kind of fun, is you turn it into a bar, you know, like a a salad bar or, or people can like just pick what they want of all the ingredients that are out, and they can build their own wrap, customized to what they like. This becomes extremely important when you have kids, (laughs) because they tend to be extraordinarily picky. And like my youngest is finally starting to eat more vegetables, and he's you know, growing into that. But you know, often when we do a wrap, he'd be like, you know, a meat and cheese. And then that would be it. And now he's finally expanding all three of my children. Whoa, I feel like it's like the sun ray comes through the sky are now eating all eating more vegetables and they're all eating salad. And so it's just kind of like, wow, I didn't think I was going to get here because all three of them were very, very resistant to eating many vegetables, especially raw vegetables or anything that they thought looked weird, right? If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this first recipe is from my cookbook, One Dish, Two Diets, which just came out in a hardcover, and I just got my copies of it, and I'm so excited to see it in hardcover. I don't know, it's just something fun to see your book in hardcover. It's just a fun thing to see, and I don't know, it's just kind of special and fun. I've had the paperback out for a very, very long time, but I just put the the hardcover out, and it's just really fun to see, to see it live, and in a hardcover. I don't know. It's just special. That's all I got to say. Okay. And I do want to mention that I just was on a podcast for my YA novel, Hungry Hearts, and that will be coming out soon. And when it's live, I will let you know about it just to show you another flavor of me. I write YA romance, young adult romance. So I will share that with you when it goes live. It should be going live real soon in like a week or so. So it was really fun to talk to them. There are three sisters who run the podcast, and it's a fiction podcast, and they read books and talk about them and then have authors on for interviews. So that's another side to me that I'll share with you when that comes out live. You can find that book on Amazon, by the way. It is in ebook, paperback, audiobook, and audio CD. Okay. 
hybrid vegetarian and meat lettuce tortilla wrap bar. That's what I call this. It's kind of a long name in my One Dish, Two Diets cookbook. I just really love all the colors. Like I'm looking at the pictures right now. I got my cookbook open and I'm looking at all the colors. I see orange. I see dark red. I see green. I see light green, dark green. It's just really pretty. And oh, and so red and orange. Did I say that? I don't know. I'm looking at the colors and I think they look beautiful. So I'm like distracted. It just looks really pretty. And it's just very like colorful. It's been really great too for like the winter. Like right now we have so much snow and it's just all white out there. It's beautiful. But you know, you're craving some color. You're craving. This is a time of year a lot of people like to go fi- buy flowers, right? To put on their table. And it's just, they want that pop of color, that pop of freshness. And this particular recipe gives you that too in food form. So it's an easy lunch or dinner, and it's so customizable to individual tastes, as well as numbers of servings, because you just have a bar. So you have all these like bowls sitting out full of different things. And it's like a salad bar, like I said, allowing people to add whatever their heart desires to their own particular wrap. You can totally personalize it, and it's perfect. You can make a vegetarian wrap. You can make a meat wrap. You could make a mega meat wrap. Whatever you want, you get to do it. This meal is a great way to use up leftover meat and leftover cooked vegetables, too. So this is something that's pretty quick. Like for me, when I've made it, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, and it really helps to have those vegetables already cooked that you can pull out as a leftover to add to your bar. It's a great great way to use up leftover meats. So this is what I did for this particular recipe. These are the ingredients that you would need. One bag of pre-washed sweet butter or romaine lettuce. So this is a very convenient meal because it's like pulling in all these things that are already like ready for you. Three-fourths cup ranch dressing or change the dressing out. That's the other way you can modify this. I mean, there's so many different dressings out there that make a wrap very delicious. Another way you could do that is add a whole bunch of different dressings. So then people can also customize that. One tablespoon chia seeds. Always got to throw those chia seeds in whenever you can because they add in extra nutrients and they're just really good for you. One half cup raisins or dried cranberries. One half cup to one cup of nuts. Now I've done different types of nuts. Sunflower seeds, chopped pecans, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, or almond slivers as desired, but I've tried all those different nuts in wraps and they work wonderful. One cup diced cucumber, one cup diced tomato, one half cup diced onion, one cup diced apple. I love adding apple. One cup cooked squash cubes, whether that be, well, any kind of squash works, right? Two cups of shredded cheese, any kind. In this particular recipe and picture, I used cheddar. And then one to two cups of pre-cooked chicken chunks or pieces of turkey, or you could even use sandwich meats. You could break it up into pieces or leftover grilled meats or any meat that's already cooked works really, really great. And then whatever you have, you can put that out. It's just like a use up the leftovers meal. Then, of course, the star of this recipe, the tool, the tortillas. So then you need all those tortillas setting out. You can use any size you want. My family tends to like either the medium size or the really large size, which I think often is called burrito. So get those out there, get them ready, and you just set it up. We set it up up on the counter and put all these things out, and people go down the line and add what they want, just like a salad bar. Instructions. Pretty simple. Combine three-fourths cup ranch dressing and one tablespoon chia seeds in a bowl and stir well. Pour dressing and chia seed mixture over the bag of lettuce in a bowl tossed with tongs to coat. Assemble all the toppings in individual bowls or, alternatively, mix all ingredients together and toss and add to tortillas. And then people could add meat if if you want. So you can do it either way. I've done it both ways. And then about one half cup dressing coated lettuce is added to each individual tortilla. Of course, the person is going to decide how much they want or if they even want the lettuce. And then you add the toppings as desired per personal taste. And it's just, it's really... 
it just gives a unique flavor. And I love adding unusual things to wraps, like the squash cubes. I mean, that was just one day I had leftover squash and I was like, how can I use this? And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, wraps. Think outside the box, you know, like weird things you would never even think of. You could add, there's so many different options you could add. Any kind of dried fruit. I mean, get creative. Like, hey, what if you did lettuce and pineapple and ham? You make the Hawaiian, a Hawaiian wrap. I mean, just, you could come up with so many ideas just right off the top of your head based on your leftovers. And I like this this particular way to do it because then the dressing is like mixed into the lettuce. Otherwise, you could, you know, drizzle it over the top of whatever you're putting down the middle of your tortilla to be your filling. You could drizzle the dressing on top. I liked this way particularly because it was a way to incorporate the chia seeds as well into it instead of just like sprinkling it on. It's kind of like they stick in the dressing then, right? So in the lettuce is already coated in all of it. So, you know, other things you can do is buy different oils to add to it. A sandwich, like sub sandwich flavored oils. Have you ever seen those? Those are, are a great addition to you and just sprinkle that on top where it's got the herbs already in there. Instacart groceries delivered in as little as one hour. Free delivery on your first order, $35. Save yourself that trip to the market. Instacart delivers groceries in as fast as one hour. They connect you with personal shoppers in your area to shop and deliver groceries from your favorite stores. Free delivery on your very first order, over $35. Following the link in the show notes, let's Instacart know we sent you and help support our show. Multiple stores available. Shop all of your favorites on a single order. The products you love from your local stores. Hand selected by shoppers based on your preferences. Delivery to your door in as fast as one hour. Instacart highlights deals to help you save money. Don't we all want that? Find everything you usually buy and get smart suggestions for new items. Instacart picks the freshest produce and keeps your eggs safe too. Woohoo! Those are things I want. Try it out today. You will love it. Or take some olive oil and add Italian herbs to it yourself. I mean, these are ways that you can get creative. And I think that's one of the greatest things about cooking is that you can be creative right in the moment. So like this particular recipe, you get home and it's you know, time to make dinner and you're like, ah, what am I going to make? Well, this is the kind of thing where you're just kind of collecting all the things you happen to have and you put it into a tortilla. Use up those leftovers, that leftover grilled turkey or chicken, cut it into pieces and put it out for a wrap. Leftover ground beef, whatever you have, you can add it to the tortilla and make a wrap so very easily. And my kids like this too because they get to pick what they want to put on there. Like I said before, they're kind of picky, but you know, they can put what they want. My oldest really, really is into meat. Like he's a you know, bodybuilder. He's always lifting and working out at the gym. So he's mega into the meat. So he can pile the meat on as much as he wants. And that's another great thing about this particular idea for a meal for a hybrid family is that it's so customizable. I can make a vegetarian one. They all can make various meat ones and everyone's happy. And I made one meal, right? <laughs> that's actually what got me to create this cookbook in the first place was having a a family that has multiple diets in it that are drastically different, like me, vegetarian and meat eaters, you end up doing a lot of short order cook preparation. So whenever I can get a meal like this that fits all of us, I'm like so happy. I'm like so excited. It's less work for me. Everyone likes it. It's just like a win-win. So it's just it's the way to go. So the more recipes that I can find like this and do for my family, the better for me. I'm busy. I'm super busy with all the things I do. So making meals gets to be a challenge. There's a couple other simple recipes that I'm going to share that are really quick, easy ways to use tortillas in meals too. And now this one is a hybrid vegetarian or pepperoni pizza tortilla. 
Yeah, get that pizza flavor so easily. You're craving pizza. You don't have any pizza. You have just want to make one portion or something for your kids for a snack. This is so easy. And again, you can make it cheese or you can make it meat containing, whatever you want. And it works great for kids, too, because kids can actually make this on their own. Because all you need is a tortilla. You need the ingredients and a microwave, right? (laughs) It's super easy. So ingredients, one tablespoon olive oil, one half cup diced onion, one half cup diced red pepper, one carton of sliced baby bella cremini mushrooms, four large tortillas, eight tablespoons of pizza sauce, one cup shredded mozzarella cheese, one teaspoon grated Parmesan cheese, and pepperoni slices or whatever meat you desire. So basically you're going if you're gonna make this, it's you're gonna heat up the oil in the pan. And you're going to add the onion and diced red pepper and saute for about five minutes. And then add the mushrooms and saute a couple minutes more and then remove it from the heat. You've got your veggies all ready. So per pizza tortilla roll, you're going to place the tortilla on the plate and add two tablespoons of pizza sauce and one half cup cooked vegetables in a line down the middle of the tortilla. Sprinkle it with one fourth cup mozzarella cheese and one fourth teaspoon Parmesan cheese and add pepperoni as desired. Fold in both sides of the tortilla to make a roll. Cover with a paper towel and tuck it around to hold the tortilla closed if needed, because sometimes, you know, they'll pop back open, depending on how much you actually put in there and the size of your tortilla, and microwave it for a minute. It's ready. That's it. Repeat as desired. So this is a really quick meal. I mean, really quick meal. And kids could do it. If you had the veggies already prepared, ahead of time, then they just pull it out of the fridge, the prepared veggies, and then put it on the tortilla and microwave it. So this is a great little meal that you can make very easily, quickly, get that pizza taste, that pizza flavor without actually being a pizza. The other thing I really love to do, which is really fun, is have you ever taken a tortilla and used it as your pizza crust? It makes a fantastic pizza crust. It's thin and crispy. Just lay it out on a cookie sheet put pizza sauce on it like you're making a pizza, same way you'd build a pizza, and then put your your cheese on top, maybe Italian seasonings, maybe some Parmesan cheese or the cheese mixture with Romano and Asiago and Parmesan, and you pop it in the oven and cook it. It's It's actually a pretty good pizza crust. If you have never done it, it works out pretty good. And I recently made one that my son was like, did you make this or was this frozen? I'm like, no, I I made it. He was like, wow, that's really good because the crust turned out so beautiful. It was just crispy and perfect. And I had added Italian seasoning mixture on top and it was just so good. And I agreed too. I was like, wow, this, this is amazing. Normally, when I've made them before, I didn't add in the Italian seasonings. I think that really does help a lot. It makes it even yummier. So that's a way you could use tortillas and make something pizza-like. Super kid-friendly meal, right? I mean, totally. Okay, another tortilla recipe from my cookbook, One Dish, Two Diets. Easy, all-ones, hybrid, vegetarian, and sausage egg burrito. I call this one easy, all-ones because... All the ingredients have a one in them. It's like super easy to remember and it's super easy to make. So it's so easy, so quick, and it's made in the microwave. Sometimes I'll make this in the morning or for lunch or for the rest of my family if they're eating meat and I don't feel like something really complicated for myself, I might make this as a vegetarian meal entree for me while they're eating meat. And I call it easy all ones, like I said, because it's easy to remember. All the increments are in the number one, which makes this recipe very easy to remember. Plus, it is cooked in the microwave for one minute. Ha! All ones, as I said. The recipe is highly customizable because each burrito is made individually, and I can make a meat one for one of my meat-eating members of my family or a vegetarian one for myself. I use leftover cooked meat again from the freezer if I thaw it out or I already have it in the fridge, and it's just easy to add. It's so easy. A great way to use leftovers. What do you need for each burrito? 
You would need one fajita sized tortilla, one egg, one tablespoon skim milk, one tablespoon salsa, one tablespoon finely shredded cheddar cheese, one tablespoon tomatoes and chilies from a can, one tablespoon sour cream, salt and pepper to taste, and optional, one tablespoon cooked sausage or other meat. So here comes in the microwave. This is a really fast meal, for real. And it's something you can do when you don't have much time or you're really super hungry and you don't want to wait. Or you just need something different that the rest of your family is eating. You're not eating it. You need something. This is easy and quick. Spray a microwavable bowl or a mug with cooking spray. Crack one egg into the prepared bowl. Add one tablespoon milk and scramble it with a fork. Pop it in the microwave and cook it for one minute or until fully cooked, depending on the strength of your microwave. Slide the egg patty out of the bowl and cut it in half. Line up each of the halves in a line down the middle of your tortilla. Add salt and pepper to taste. Sprinkle one tablespoon each of salsa, cheese, tomatoes, and chilies along the egg. Optional. Sprinkle one tablespoon cooked sausage or meat along the egg if meat one is desired. Spread one tablespoon sour cream on one side of the tortilla, covering the entire surface up to the egg patty. I kind of use a spoon for this, so it's easy to spread it around. And then you fold it. And your sour cream edge should go on top. And this is what will keep your tortilla sealed as it's in the microwave. Otherwise, it might pop open because tortillas don't generally stay down themselves. They have to be tucked or some sort of like glue to hold them down. I always think of the sour cream as the glue. You just spread it on there and then you press it down and it will stick. And so that's it. You're, you know, you're going to microwave it for a minute. If you need a little longer, go for it. And they're done. Hey, isn't that easy? I just think it's so easy. I love this too because kids can make it. If they're hungry, it's something that they could make a meal on their own. And easily they could do it. They could add what they wanted and they could actually do it. Like my 13-year-old could even do this. <laughs> He's a little resistant to learning things in the kitchen and doing things for himself. But he can do it. He could make this. It would be very easy for him to do, and any kid. Also works great for, like, college students who only have a microwave in their dorm room, like my oldest son. He's uh, he's talked about the eggs at college being a rubber eggs. Like, they're not real eggs. <laughs> I mean, it's a dorm cafeteria. You know, this... They're making massive amounts of food, but he's like, they're fake eggs, they're rubber eggs. So <laughs> microwave is a good option because you can buy eggs at the store, put them in your little dorm fridge and pull them out and make them in the microwave. And a lot of the dorms do have like maybe one oven or stove top where people can share. So again, they could go down to that area and cook their eggs in a frying pan if they're that motivated. But, you know, it depends on what they want to do. But they're busy, too. So these are just great options for easy, quick meals using a tortilla. And I just love it, too, because when you have leftovers, you can easily repeat this and use up all your ingredients. So, you know, I love leftovers for lunch. It's a perfect thing because it's already ready. It's done. It's good. Let's go. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Please follow my podcast and then you won't miss any because you'll get notifications that they are out there when the new episodes launch. Give me a rating. I would love to hear your thoughts and see what you think about my podcast. It's a relatively new podcast for me. So it's new. I, I'd love feedback. Would love to know what you like and what you dislike. And if you liked it, I really would love to, to see your review, especially, right? But all reviews are welcome. All reviews are constructive criticism. And I will take that and use it. I hope you have an amazing day. And I will put my links down in the podcast notes where you could find my books, my cookbooks, and my other books. I do also have another book out that I should mention. It's just a little small pamphlet-like book, and it's got ideas for people who have lost their mom. So it's a grief self-help book, and it's 
it's small, but people really are moved by it when they read it, and it's really, really helpful for people. I lost my mom when I was 16, and so I've had a lifetime of of trying to figure out how to navigate that loss. And this actually grew from a podcast episode that is always very popular, especially around Mother's Day, because people are looking for ideas of how to process and deal with not having their mom there on Mother's Day. Their mom has passed away. So the book is about how you can celebrate the memory of your mom and turn it into a positive because there's so much negative. You know, she's not here. You can't celebrate with her because she's not alive anymore. So this book really just gives you some ideas of how to turn that energy into something positive and and honor your mom, celebrate your mom, 40 ways to honor your mom after she has passed away. So it's very helpful. And I did it just to help other people. I have quite a bit of experience with dealing with loss of a parent for many, many years. Obviously, I'm I'm now 48 and I lost her when I was 16. So I've had a, a long time to deal with her loss and how to deal with it, and how to turn it into the positive. So check that out on my website, Julie Hoag Writer. I have all kinds of blog posts about family travel, food, things about pets. I'm on Pinterest. I have a couple of videos that I put on there of our guinea pigs that are just, I have blown up, like 500,000 views. (laughs) But guinea pigs are so cute. People like to look at them. They're like eating grass or, you know, eating stuff. And we're talking to them. And I just, it blows me away. They're over 500,000 views of our little pet guinea pigs, you know. (laughs) like That's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope that you have a great day. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Great weekend. And don't forget to check out Instacart. They have great deals. You need something last minute check them out. They can get it to you easily and without you having to leave your house. So check out those deals down in the podcast notes. They're great resources for busy people like you and me. Okay, you have an amazing day and we'll see you next time on Vegetarians and Meat Lovers Split Table Recipes. Oh yeah.